Oh, God. Ah! No, 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 no. I hate it. I hate this. I hate it. Wake up. Good morning, evening, and night. Wake up. Wake up. Come to the living room right now. We're having a family meeting, okay? Come sit. Pause your game. Have a seat, okay? We have to talk. There's some weird stuff happening in the news, and I want you to hear about me talking about it, okay? For those who aren't friends and aren't family, this is a show where we go through the weird parts of the news, and we just talk about the stuff that does not matter as much as everything else going on, because the world is too difficult, okay? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this planet. Quick thing before we get into the intro, I am going to be singing in a concert that is raising money for the backlog. The information is below and it's also in the description. Please buy tickets, please come out and help support us and help us raise money for a really, really great cause. All right, that's enough jibbing and enough jabbering. We're here to talk about some news. Let's go read the news. All right, let's wag this tail. I always try and make an effort to say this and sometimes forget, but I want to remind you guys, if you want to see more stories, I post extra stories that are exclusive to Patreon on my Patreon for the $5 and up tiers. So if this ain't enough offbeat for you, you can go uh, off to the Patreon. It's really hard not to say beat off. Very, very hard to do. So I think I deserve a little credit for trying. Okay, story number one. This one's coming at you from Kentucky.com. Not in gov address, that's interesting. This could be run by anyone. It happens a lot. Tennessee lawmaker sipping chocolate syrup bottle makes waves. Okay, we're not a judgmental show, right? We have open minds, open hearts, open ears. I'm gonna be respectful of this man's lifestyle till I find a reason to not be respectful. A Tennessee lawmaker managed to steal the spotlight from impeachment, the Iowa caucuses and State of the Union preparations this week with his eyebrow raising hydration strategy. <laughs> you guys couldn't, you wanted to innovate on how to say drinking water? <laughs> Reporter Natalie Allison, who covers state politics for the Tennessean in Nashville, shared a photo Monday taken by photojournalist George Walker IV. Man, I wanna be a fourth or like the third or some kind of like, no, I don't, I don't. Taken by photojournalist George Walker or the fourth. I want to see this picture. <laughs> it's the cat feeder. It's dinner time for toilet. He's just gonna eat dinner behind us while we chat. <laughs> I thought it would be a water bottle with like a Hershey logo on it. Maybe it was a scandal about how he was subtly advertising for them, but that boy just drinking. He's just drinking. He could be drinking anything out of that. It, it's probably not even just water. I wonder if it still kind of tastes like syrup. That boy's just drinking cheese, drinking Hershey's juice. Why do that? Frugal, it's frugal. Devil's advocate, frugal. A little bizarre, the article says. Twitter thought so, but Allison said it's not an uncommon sight, writing that he often does the same during the legislative session. That's interesting. So what's in the bottle? The Tennessean reports that it's not chocolate or booze, as some speculated. Man, it's a repurposed syrup bottle that I drink my water out of, Calfee said Tuesday, according to the newspaper. I'm not gonna buy a $25 or $35 or $45 water bottle that's not worth what it costs because I'll probably put it down and leave it somewhere. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to do that. Who's spending $45 on a water bottle? I guess you're gonna be less likely to forget it if it's a syrup bottle. <laughs> he added that he and his wife recycle everything per the Tennessean saying, I was fixing to put it in the plastic recycling one day at home and I thought, shoot, I could put water in that. <laughs> Calfee, a Republican <laughs> from Kingston who represents Rowan and Luden counties, attended East Tennessee State University and serves on the committee, Utilities and Government Operations Committees in the Tennessee General Assembly. Sexy. That title is a lover's title, boy. You know that guy kisses good. Look at him putting his thin, wet lips around the tip of a Hershey's bottle and slurping that bad boy in the middle of the meeting. Everyone's got their ties all choking him to death and this guy's going all hog on some Hershey mid-conversation. Oh boy, he's not gonna let a lofty position of power keep him from being frugal. The other side of this is that this man is making laws up in Tennessee, down in Tennessee. If he is being this persnickety about what he drinks water out of when he's on the go, you think he's gonna go the extra mile to help his citizens when they need somebody to do a little bit more than just find a local container that's already in his hand? I mean, he does innovate. He's either very responsible or real lazy. Mm-mm, it's more work to clean out a Hershey's bottle. He's really going out of his way to, to also go out of his way. Uh, this is probably gonna be one of the main things he's known for at this point. Everyone needs a thing. The man's got a thing, that's for sure. 
I don't got a thing. Story number two. Ooh, child. This guy comes at you from UPI.com. Or Uppy. Com. Man comes down from pole after 78 days in a barrel. Thank you, Ben Hooper, for doing God's work and reporting on what matters in life. February 7th, a South African man who broke his own Guinness World Record for staying in a barrel atop a pole finally returned to solid ground after 78 days. Hi Dang. Alright. Like I said, everyone needs a thing. This guy's got a thing. Not as catchy as Hershey Bottle Boy, but uh, it is a thing. Vernon Kruger descended from the 82-foot pole in Dillstrom after spending 78 days, 23 hours, and 14... Uh, well, hi. Do you... What can I do for you? Tell me everything. Yeah? I can't do it right now. No, the world doesn't stop spinning when you need something. He was airlifted from his perch via helicopter. Kruger first set a Guinness World Record for the feat in 1997, when he spent 67 days in a barrel affixed to the top of a pole. Oh, and this time around, he stayed in the barrel for 11 days after breaking his own record. Man said he stayed for the extra time to make the record more difficult for the next person to break. He says he does not intend to attempt to break his own record again. Why would you even start? What a peculiar thing to even start to do. Get in barrel on a pole? Why? For who? For free? Is this a ride? Is this technically a roller coaster? When does it become a roller coaster? Roller coaster can't be car. Car isn't the same. Car is similar, still not a roller coaster. I think you gotta go up more than you go left and right. Yes, you go higher than you would normally would in any other condition. He's not moving. If he falls, does it become a roller coaster? I guess you need to roll for it to be a roller coaster. Is this a ride? Is it technically a ride if he's just affixed atop a pole? Is that a ride? So he goes to top of pole, get in barrel, sit for 11 days. You know, this man is physically peaking in a very, very literal sense. And I imagine this is the first time he's peaked since the last time he got on a barrel affixed to the top of a big, big pole. So I guess once you accomplish your dreams, you're sort of shit out of luck. If your dream is to be in a barrel for longer than the rest of the world, what do you do next? You do it again, I guess. This guy has some urge that I, I can't guarantee will ever be fulfilled because this is a specific thing to even have started to have done. I can't judge, but this weird, yeah? The question is, is this a ride? To sit in barrel on pole, high, high, tall, high, is that a ride, like a theme park ride? And when does it stop becoming a ride? Because if he went up and came straight right back down, that I think is a ride. But if you go up, stay up, for a second and then come down, that's, that's, but is that, does, how long before, maybe it's just a really long ride that isn't very fun. I guess it's sort of like, is chewing gum food? It's not supposed to be, but you do everything you do to food to it. The world's full of mysteries. Oh, hang on, hang on a second. A friend sent me a link, so I read the headline. I have done nothing further with it because I refuse to ever even think about this ever again after this episode is over. So nobody ever bring it up to me again. All right, let's just get it over with. This is from the dailymail.co.uk. Italian woman, 20, I just, oh God. Ah, she, no, 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 no. I hate it, I hate this, I hate it. Italian woman, 25, grows eyelash like hairs out of her gums at, huh, uh, Woof. As baffled doctors believe it was fueled by her polycystic ovary syndrome. Ovary make eyelash? Yo, oh, I hate it. I hate the pictures. Yike. I'm gonna try and not look at the pictures while I read this. An Italian woman who grows eyelash like hairs in her mouth is only the fifth case to ever be reported. Four others, get this? Four others? Oh, it's so spooky how stuff like this can just happen to you. You do nothing. And suddenly you get this. This feels like it should be a punishment for people who do real bad fucked up shit. I don't think sh this upsets. Doctors are completely baffled as to why the hair, <laughs> the rare, <laughs> you. Doctors are completely, doctors. Do I'm so upset. Doctors are completely baffled as to why the rare phenomenon occurs, but believe polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS, may be to blame. When the unidentified 25 year old first sought help 10 years ago, test shows she had abnormally high levels of testosterone. It's characteristic of PCOS and causes excess hair growth. Hormonal treatment at last stopped the eyelashes growing. <sighs> 
Poor girl. However, six years later, the woman's hairy mouth worsened as she came off the PCOS medication. No! Fuck. <laughs> oh. Even after doctors looked at samples of her gum tissue under the microscope, they were left clueless. The cells that line the inside of the mouth and skin cells on the body which sprout hair are different, but may cross over, the team suggested. Oh, oh, oh. I hate the pictures. No. No. I have to show you the pictures because people are gonna be upset if I don't and I kind of want you to feel shitty too. Okay, three, two, one. Here's what the hairy teeth look like. Holy shit. That saw doctors at the University of Campania Luigi Van Vitelli in Italy treated the woman with gingival hirustium. The woman first went to the doctor in 2009, age 15. She had the hairs in her mouth as well as on the chin and neck. Let's read in this article. Just to see what information is pertinent to get the story to you. I hate it. I hate this article. A year on, the woman's condition had worsened, with hairs growing between even more teeth in the top and bottom. No. Duh. Yeah, basically, the, when you're being born, the cells that produce mucus are also similar to the ones that create hair, and I guess somebody done shuffled those round up in her mouth meat, and this is the result. I hate that. I hate that. I'm sure this lady is very lovely and it is a hoot at parties. I never want to see her mouth again. I feel so bad for her, but no, no ma'am, no, please, no thank you. I'm okay not having that ever happen, ever. No. Okie dokie. I don't want to remind you that I'm going to be singing. You should please go buy those tickets if you're in the LA area and come watch me sing. If not, you can still donate to the backlog. Also, I've been wondering about changing up the format. I want to see what your guys' thoughts are about this. I am releasing multiple stories in one longish episode once a week. How would you guys feel if I mixed it up into one story multiple times a week? Shorter videos. Is that more digestible? I'm trying to figure this thing out. Anyhow, with that, we're going to close her on out with what I like to call the caboose. The caboose is just a headline. We're not gonna dive into the story, no, no, no. We're just going to read the headline, digest that throughout the week, and try and pretend like it didn't happen, okay? We're just reading the headline. Stop trying to get me to read the article. I'm not doing it. This is the caboose. The caboose is really more about gossip than it is the news. I will not read the story, just the headline. Here we go. This week's caboose comes from thesun.co.uk. Sex mad tornado of 300,000 disease ridden bats launch dive bomb attacks on kids as they invade town. If you want to see more of this, don't forget to check out the Patreon. I have more stories that are exclusive to Patreon released throughout the week. So go ahead and uh, give that bad boy a click as well as looking at tickets as we discussed with the concert. And that's all I got for you. So I hope you guys have a wonderful, beautiful week. Now beat it. Do 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 do.